Well, everything I've done in my life has brought me to this point. Just have to face facts. It can only go one way. It's either my YouTube channel or becoming a farmer. I mean, look at that red leaf lettuce I grew. That thing is basically a Christmas tree at this point. Nevertheless, I must choose. Or I could just play Stardew Valley. That'll do. What are you doing here? How, how did you how did you get in my house? This is this is breaking and enter. This is illegal. <laughs> you are inside my. This is breaking and enter. Let me preface this with one question: Have you ever played Harvest Moon? If you said yes, then this game is definitely for you. If you said no, then you're in for an even bigger treat. So when you start Stardew Valley, of course you have to create your character. And today, I would like to introduce you to Tim Tom 2.0, the Super Saiyan. And naturally, his farm should be called Vegeta Sucks. He's a diehard Goku fan. The game starts with your grandfather telling you that the emptiness that is modern life will eventually consume you, and that you should open the letter he gives you when that happens. Then you're inside of a large office building with a lot of cubicles. See this sign right here? I want you to remember this. You'll see why in a second. Then after moving past a bunch of cubicles, we reach yours. And yup, this is why I wanted you to remember that sign. You call this thriving? He's not even surviving. That's the key step to thriving. You can't thrive if you're dead. I'm also pretty sure that this is slightly illegal. So your character dies inside a little and decides it's time to open up grandfather's letter. To sum it up, your grandfather gives you a deed to his old farm. Vegeta sucks. <laughs> oh boy. And he says that there, you can reconnect with nature and actual human beings instead of being stuck working for Joja Corp. Until you die. Don't look at me like that, I have proof. Then you arrive to Stardew Valley, where you will take up residence in a place called Pelican Town. You're met with Robin, the town carpenter. She brings you to your farm, where we meet the mayor, Lewis. Well, look who isn't happy with his farm. No! Now, from here on in, I'm going to be switching to my actual character, Tom Shark, because if I switch now, I can show you all how much progress can actually be made in just two and a half in-game seasons. Well, here I am in my actual farm. Yes, I still have some work to do, but it's slowly coming along. When this game was released, everybody, including me, thought it was the spiritual successor to Harvest Moon. And we were right. But we were also very wrong. Everyone was pleasantly surprised to see that not only is this a farming game, but it is also an action-adventure game as well. Plus, this game pulls in Animal Crossing and has you doing some town production activities too. You can do anything from running your farm to exploring in different mines, donating to the museum, getting married, helping the townsfolk, going fishing, upgrading the community center, and so much more. God, I sound like one of those guys on an infomercial. And yes, you could do the majority of that stuff in Harvest Moon too, but somehow Stardew Valley took what Harvest Moon did right, and does those things even better. The basics of Harvest Moon farming work like this. You buy seeds and water them until they grow. You can buy animals to get products from as well, and different crops are assigned to different seasons. But in Stardew Valley, you can take your crops and do some new things with them. By using the preserves jar, you can turn your fruits into jellies and your vegetables into pickled vegetables. Literally, it's just whatever crop you used with the word pickles after it. But who cares? It's cool anyways. And with the keg, you can make your vegetables into juices and your fruits into wines. What I also like about Stardew Valley compared to Harvest Moon is that you can place buildings wherever you want. Except your house. The only thing I don't like is now I have to pay for all of them. And of course, then there's buying animals and obtaining their products. Most of this is the same with Harvest Moon. They both have the mayonnaise machine and you can get cheese and milk from your barn animals, etc, etc. But what Harvest Moon doesn't have is a slime hutch. You can raise up to 20 slimes in here and they create slime balls. Although you don't need slime balls for a lot, it still looks cool. 
Okay, the slime balls are almost useless. Totally worth it. Speaking of slimes, the mines are full of them. The few action-adventure aspects there are in this game are not the most deep. You can get helmets and boots to build your defenses and immunities, and you can assign a maximum of two rings to raise a certain stat or give you a new ability. My favorite ring is the glow ring. It always makes your character have an aura of light. You know who this would be perfect for. Anyways, this is really useful in the mines because some of the rooms can be pretty dark, and the mines go pretty deep. I'm already on level 90 and it's still going. And the deeper you go, the more monsters you'll encounter. But as long as you have the right weapon, you're good. This Templar blade is doing me pretty well. And with the harder monsters, the more treasure, gemstones, and ores you can obtain. And trust me, you'll need a lot of iron and copper for crafting and buildings and more stuff that I can't think of off the top of my head. And you know what? My farm is getting pretty lonely. I think I need to get married. Oh, come on, Leah. I've given you so many daffodils already. Well, somebody's really picky. And you see these hearts right here? These are your friendship meters with everyone in town. And by the looks of it, I've made myself quite the hermit, huh? The more you fill up people's heart meters, the more they'll like you. You fill them up by giving them presents and talking to them often. And if you get them high enough, then you can just roam into people's houses and do whatever you want. But considering that I've had barely any interactions with anybody, I don't have any relevant footage. RIP. The biggest things you can do to really improve your town is donate things to the museum and donate things to the community center. Donating things to the museum is the same as it is in Animal Crossing. Except this time you're not donating fish and bugs, you're donating rocks and dwarven artifacts. The community center, however, is a whole nother story. There is so much you have to do there. There are these little spirits inside of the place and they want you to repair the building step by step. And I literally mean step by step. You have to repair the pantry, the broiler room, the crafts room, the vault, the fish tank, and the bulletin board. And each thing has like five bundles to fill. What even? You cannot fill all of these in one season because each of them requires items and crops from all of the different seasons. But I don't care. Ever since the wizard gave me some LSD water so I could start talking to the spirits, I haven't been happier. By the way, that's not even all of it. I haven't even mentioned exploring the secret locations, upgrading your weapons, having kids, or even fishing. But that's been a thing since even Harvest Moon, so that's not important. By the way, fishing in the rain is OP. Minecraft logic. Something's a little different here. So that was Stardew Valley. I was very pleasantly surprised by this game, and I was also thankful that I had just enough Steam money to pay for it. When I was younger, I didn't really indulge myself in Harvest Moon that much. My cousins were the ones who played it the most, and they really got me interested in it. So I am very thankful that I have a Harvest Moon-esque game in my arsenal that has fantasy elements in it. How cool is that? The main way that I found out about this game was through Pro Jared's Let's Plays of it. They're pretty good and they're pretty funny, so I really recommend that you watch them. And I'll leave a link to the first episode of it in the description. And I'll also leave a link to the Steam page for Stardew Valley because I couldn't recommend that you play this game more. You know what I just realized? I've been playing it pretty safe with the games I've been reviewing recently. I should play something weird. Something really weird. Something so weird that I can't even imagine how weird it is. But what game could I possibly play that's that weird? Why did I say that? Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, then liking it is pretty nice of you. And if you want to see more, then subscribing is the best way to do so. Also, you can watch my review for Far Cry Primal if you click the annotation to the left. And you can watch my next review if you click the annotation to the right. And I bet you know what it's going to be about already, don't you? Yet again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next video.